So in this video, I want to talk about how Jackson Hinkle has been permanently banned from YouTube. And I think it's wrong. I don't like Jackson Hinkle. I think he is profoundly wrong. But I still think that he shouldn't be banned from YouTube. Now, he was already demonetized on YouTube. Um, and that's because he violated their policies. And that's okay. He could be demonetized. And be, I mean, the kind of things that he was trying to show on YouTube were things that um, you see Jake Bro go well out of his way to say, I can't show this on YouTube, but you can find this here. And But he was violating that policy. That's okay. But to silence his voice, I think is a wrong thing. I recognize that my stance on this is going to create a problem and it's going to create a problem where misinformation can spread. But the opposite error of silencing the wrong voices can also become just as problematic. In fact, it can become more problematic in my estimation. Okay, here's Jimmy Dore talking to Jackson Hinkle about... So guess the one and the only, the hair, Jackson Hinkle, former host of his YouTube channel called The Dive, which can now be, you can now catch him on Rumble. Uh... Please welcome to the show, Jackson Hinkle. Thanks for having me on, Jimmy. And why did I say that? Because Jackson Hinkle got kicked off of YouTube for telling the truth about Ukraine. Okay, let's stop there. Did he get taken off for telling the truth? Is that really what happened? Or did he get taken off for doing other stuff that was against the services or against the policies of YouTube? So... What he was just showing was he was starting to go all in for Palestine, uh, the, the last little clips. And I didn't actually watch the videos. I just saw the thumbnails and what he was saying and like the, the, uh, the titles and that kind of thing. But he was starting to go down this path. And my guess is that he was starting to show footage that he shouldn't have shown or saying things that were against the policy. Now, I also am arguing he shouldn't have gotten removed. And I know that some people aren't going to like that, but I'm I'm not a free speech absolutist because you can't yell fire in a building, but I'm pretty close in the sense that short of doing something like that, you can say what you want and be wrong. And I can say you're wrong. You should have the right to say stupid stuff and I should have the right to say you're stupid. Don't say that. Okay. But that's how uh, a civil society should be able to operate. Right now, remember... Remember, you don't get in trouble for lying. People that NBC, ABC, LJ, all have been... Okay, so he's lying about that, <laughs> okay? you it, It's not that he's telling the truth. And you do get in trouble for lying when it's clear enough, but he's making the point that the mainstream media can lie all the time. Lying about the Ukraine war at the top of their lungs... Jackson Hinkle's been telling the truth about it, and that's what they won't let you. No, 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 he's not. Jackson Hinkle has been spreading all kinds of misinformation and misrepresenting what's going on in Ukraine in a significant way. And I've called him on it a number of times. I have multiple videos where I'm reacting to Jackson Hinkle, but I still think he ought to be on YouTube. Do on YouTube is they don't let you tell. Well, let, let me clarify that. I'm not saying that I want him on YouTube. I am saying that I don't think he should have been removed. There's two different things. I'm not saying it's good that he is there, but it is worse if they can arbitrarily remove him because who else can they arbitrarily remove? So I need to make that fine distinction. The truth about lots of things, and one of them is Ukraine. And so you got this. Tell me what happened, Jackson. Well, they just randomly took down my channel. I mean, you know, I'm in Russia right now, and I, I don't think that uh, the three-letter agencies in the United States are happy that there's a big YouTube channel that was debunking a lot of the, nar the narratives that have been put forward about Russia. Okay, he's a little full of himself. He really thinks that the FBI, CIA, NSA, and others are worried about him debunking the narrative about Russia. Come on, Really? That's what he wants to portray, but he, you're not that important. And about their war effort, but also just about the cities and what it's like here, the daily life of the people in this country. Yeah, and he and I did do a video about him glorifying Russia, walking through Moscow, talking about, see, is any other American city as glorious as this? And I know kind of hogwash that look at this there's there's no uh there, there's no crime well you're in red square 
<laughs> like go a couple miles east, west, or south, and you'll see that there's a crime, there's a ring around the city that's not so savory. And the biggest thing I think I exposed was that sanctions really are not dramatically impacting the everyday life here. It's a very... Ah, so he exposed that sanctions aren't impacting Russian life. And so that's why the NSA and CIA and other three-letter agencies shut him down. Really? Come on. Uh, what it was? Wow. I mean, you go, you go to any restaurant, you go to any store. I mean, everything is really just operating as usual. And... Operating better than I thought. I thought it, you know, would be. It's a, it's a very nice place. There's a lot of fancy restaurants and stuff. People live very high lives here. G wagons rolling around, Rolls Royces. I mean, so it's that's his evidence that sanctions aren't working, even though you haven't done any statistical research or shown, seen the entire country to see what. Come on. It there's also a lot of people that don't make a lot of money, but it, it's not <laughs> what they make it out to be in the West. So. YouTube decided that they were going to nuke my whole channel without any notice. They didn't cite a single video, and they took my channel down after three years, 300,000 subscribers. And it's upsetting, but I thank God we have, uh, you know. It's not that upsetting to him because he also is has already monetized his program in other ways because YouTube demonetized him some time ago for putting out some horrible stuff. And so he's not really that heartbroken over it. He's already over on Rumble, and he's going to find other ways to spread his vitriol. Platforms like Rumble, where you can find me now, where I will continue uploading all my work. Um, so here's YouTube actually responded. You, you tweet the, to that tweet. It says, first, make sure to fill out an appeal form. <laughs> here's how to do that and they give you a link you should get an email with the decision once your appeal has been reviewed so keep an eye on your inbox oh thank they're so friendly over there at it's so YouTube. easy to go through another platform to get in touch with them yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like if you guys cared about an appeal or anything what wouldn't you at least stated why that they took his channel down what was the thing that what was the misinformation this is just the biggest joke in the world is that social media companies care about misinformation the number one and, and you know i actually agree with jimmy door on this i i, I don't think that uh, yeah yes he may have uh, violated the rules of service but social media companies trying to stop misinformation almost causes as much misinformation or it potentially causes as much information because whose side are they going to weigh down on, on at which point on what issue? It, it's a very, very difficult thing. The trick is you have to be discriminating in what you are willing to see or what you're willing to assume is actu actually accurate because there's a flow of potential misinformation it's not like the nightly news and to try to make it like the nightly news is is a very um destructive i think process spreader of misinformation is the u.s government the second is the corporate media okay did, and did you hear that the greatest spreader of misinformation is the u.s government this is door's fundamental philosophy if he had said rt i would have been like okay i, I can kind of see that uh, but the U.S. government is the biggest spreader of information. That's that's astonishing. And the second is the mainstream media, he says. And everybody else is a distant third to that. And so this okay. idea... I think he's spreading misinformation by just making those assumptions about how the U.S. government and then mainstream media are the biggest spreaders of misinformation. So... If that's the case and he's lying, he should be taken down. Except I'm not arguing that Jimmy Dore should be taken down. I think he should have the right to say stupid stuff and I should have the right to say he's saying stupid stuff. Just like Jackson Hinkle. The idea that social media companies are keeping us safe from bad information is of course a lie. What they're doing is they're keeping us from having accurate information. Okay, so I'm kind of agreeing again. They can't keep you safe from bad information. Uh, it just doesn't work. You just have to be an adult, have big boy pants on, and filter it out for yourself. Um, and that's that's where I land on this particular issue.
that p contradicts the propaganda that the establishment oligarchy wants us to ingest. Because if we didn't believe their propaganda, we would rise up against them. If, so, of course, over the funding of uh, Ukraine war and and now with what's going to be happening in Israel. Okay. So again, see how he's framing this? It's just it's the government that just they're, they're the the problem. Okay, they're not the problem. The problem is that if you have freedom there's things that come with freedom like responsibility that you have to take and you can't give that responsibility over to social media companies without having your freedom impinged upon and you have to it's one or the other you can't necessarily have both that's where i come down on this i don't think that hinkle should have been banned i think that it would be optimal if hinkle put his message out there and nobody wanted to listen to it because he's just so profoundly wrong but there are people that want to listen to profoundly wrong and they will find a way to find profoundly wrong okay i'm curious what you think you can disagree with me and that's okay it, it's all right uh but I, th I want you to think about what happens if they what, what would happen so i'm talking to people who are that largely care about ukraine and want to know about that what would happen if the big social media company thought that what I was talking about about pro Ukraine or what Jake Bro or Vlad or Anna or Georgie or whoever Johnny were saying about Ukraine was misinformation and they pulled the plug on us how would you perceive this then see that's the question because if they can do it here they can do it there now if he's violating terms of service by putting out uh, violent footage or something along those lines we all get that 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 that's understandable Jake avoids that, right? Regularly. I can't do that. I put it in here. Combat Vet says, I can't show that. Go to this website, right? They do that regularly. That's okay. I, I can say that that's, that's fine. But if it's just because you have a different position, that's not fine because whoever controls that platform can control your thinking by controlling what can be said or cannot be said with the position. All right. I hope that helps clarify my position. Thank you for your time, the shares, the likes, the subscribes, the coffees, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.